When you think about a superhero in Marvel or DC that relies completely on cutting-edge tech, the first person that may come to mind is probably Marvel's Iron Man. However, in the DC Universe, there are a couple of heroes that can match or even surpass Iron Man in his advanced suits, one of them being the Blue Beetle. Jaime Reyes, aka the Blue Beetle, uses the Kaji Da to create one of the most versatile and lethal battle suits in comics. Jaime might not have Tony's charisma, billionaire status, or intelligence, but advanced alien world conquering tech might be all he needs in this death battle. Before we get into the head of head armored matchup, let's get some insight on what we're dealing with and look at each side's abilities before we see who wins. Tony is one of the most intelligent characters in Marvel, and inventing wise, you gotta give credit where credit is due. Since the creation of the first suit of iron armor that was built in just a cave, Tony has gone on to design dozens of new suits over the years. We're talking about 50 plus Iron Man models, each with its own unique defensive and offensive capabilities. The default features every model has are repulsor rays, jet boosters that enable Tony to fly fast enough to break the sound barrier, and his signature unibeam that fires from his chest plate. Then there's the helmet that provides Tony with a much needed in-depth analysis display that gives him information about his enemies and environment. And lastly, the artificial intelligence in each of his suit, helping him strategize against his enemies and feeding him information on the suits and his own well-being. As mentioned earlier, Tony has built a whole lot of iron models over the years, with some of them being exceptionally powerful. So let's talk right now about the suit that has been proclaimed one of his most powerful suits, and it's that armor that will be used against the Blue Beetle. But before we do that, fill up the comment section, blast that subscribe and like button, and suit up for more great content. During the 2018 Avengers No. 5 comic run, Tony created the God Killer Mark II to take on the Celestials. He got the idea for the God Killer armor after operating a version created eons ago by an ancient alien race called the Aspirates. He created this celestial sized armor and it was left on standby orbiting Mars preparing for the Dark Celestial's attack. This mega suit of armor is powered by eight nuclear reactors and its systems are operated by Motherboard, one of Marvel's most sophisticated AIs. The suit also has the standard repulsor blasts and it's fast enough for interplanetary travel, being able to travel from Mars to Earth in mere minutes. Now, you probably want to know how this armor fared against the Dark Celestials. It was very short-lived, but it did hold its own in a battle against one Dark Celestial. The God Killer Mark II was literally capable of lifting a Celestial off the ground, so that gives some perspective of the raw power it has. But eventually, after several Celestials attacked it together, it was eventually destroyed. So the main takeaway here is that it was actually powerful enough to face a Celestial one-on-one, -on -one. With what has been said about the armor, you have a general idea just how powerful this version of Iron Man is. To give you an even more vivid picture, these cosmic entities are theorized to be on par with Odin, yeah, Thor's daddy. Even though Iron Man has an array of different suits, like his latest Mark Nil suit, we'd be here all day trying to go through each set of armor. This armor is the one that poses a significant challenge to the Blue Beetle just because of the sheer raw power it can produce and for the purpose for which it was created. Okay, so that's enough about the Marvel side. Let's see how DC can match this on their end. Jaime Reyes is just an ordinary teenager who lives with his mother, father, and little sister. Jaime's family, unlike Tony's, never had much. He would eventually discover a mysterious blue object shaped like a scarab beetle in a vacant lot. After taking it home, it came alive one night and fused with his spine while he slept. After discovering the new powers that came with the scarab, Jamie donned the moniker Blue Beetle the superhero name used by former owners of the Scarab, Dan Garrett and Ted Kord. Here's a quick run through on the Scarab. It was created by the Reach, an advanced alien civilization to secretly infiltrate and conquer planets after they made a treaty with their longtime enemy, the Green Lantern Corps. However, that's a story for another time. Meant to overwrite the host's personality and become a slave to the will of the Reach, Jaime Reyes was completely able to blow that whole idea up. That's pretty much all about the Blue Beetle's origin, but still probably would be better than that two-hour movie that's about to come out. Shaking my head. But anyway, back on track now. Compared to Tony, he doesn't have much bulk to him. But what he lacks in experience, he more than makes up for with his plethora of abilities and enhancements. Blue Beetle Scarab is literally tech from an advanced alien race, so it's definitely going to vary from whatever Tony can design. And that's why unlike Iron Man, Blue Beetle doesn't have different armor models. Blue Beetle is like a great game with constant updates, a great design that forever evolves and expands upon itself. 
For starters, the suit is designed with a kind of parasitic AI system which connects directly to the mind of the host, and every experience and thought is instantly transferred back and forth between each other. The suit comes with an abundance of capabilities, energy absorption, dispersion and weapons, vibrational frequency manipulation, which can open doorways outside space and time, flight, blades, enhanced physical abilities, the AI that comes with the battle armor, bleed dive, which basically allows the brief ability to time travel a few minutes into the past to create illusions of himself, as well as teleportation. And honestly, this isn't everything the Scarab is capable of. The suit can also adapt to any battle situation. It once produced energy discharges that could neutralize magic. It even once created artificial kryptonite to take on Kryptonians. I'm sure you can get where I'm going with this one. Now, some of these abilities are only showcased with the previous hosts, such as Ted Kord and Dan Garrett, but the capacity and ability is still present if a threat dangerous enough presents itself. Enter the God Killer Mark II. With all the knowledge you have about both superheroes, Blue Beetle still dog walks Iron Man. Iron Man majorly relies on his energy beams, advanced military tech, and AI analysis to take enemies down. However, Iron Man's suits still can't keep up with the adaptability of the Scarab or even the tech for that matter. An opponent that can create offensive and defensive countermeasures once analyzed is not a good matchup for the linear designs of Tony's suits. This battle already puts Stark behind the eight ball, but in our video, Tony is bloodlusted and in his God Killer Mark II armor, so we'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Now, this ultimate suit is powered a lot differently as stated earlier in the video, and with all the new buffs in his power systems, it may give Blue Beetle some difficulty. Even though Blue Beetle has the capacity to absorb energy weapons capable of destroying a planet, I might add, is he capable of absorbing multiple attacks of equal power? Given Jaime is still young and inexperienced, his body probably won't be able to withstand multiple blasts from the God Killer armor. However, the Kajida would immediately analyze this suit with its scarab site and deduce if they were able to withstand the blasts. Whether he could or not is of no matter because the massive size of the suit would play to its disadvantage due to the Blue Beetle's speed, agility, and teleportation. And let's not forget that the Blue Beetle can hack into any technological system, a department in which Tony suits are still susceptible to. But here's one thing that could make all the difference. The one thing Tony has over Jaime is battle experience and intelligence. Iron Man, combined with his AI, could find ways to neutralize the Kaji Da. The Scarab, as powerful as it is, has a short list of weaknesses that Tony could analyze and take advantage of. Thus, where the intelligence and battle experience comes into play. Whereas Jaime still relies more on the Beetle for battle strategies and contingencies, Tony has been through the ringer and has faced a variety of foes. He has been in situations where he has to rely on his wit and grit to get out of situations. Due to these challenges, Tony would not go down so easily. Looking at both characters, a lot of this battle will be held with their AI systems. Who can analyze who first and finish the other off as quickly as possible before a counter can be implemented? The Scarab is definitely going to find hacking quite difficult, but not impossible. And advanced alien tech around for several millennia can make hacking Motherboard in the realm of possibility. Seems like a tough task given how sophisticated Motherboard is as an AI system. In a battle of firepower, I think the power of eight nuclear reactors might give the edge to Iron Man. Blue Beetle's weaknesses are actually quite exploitable as well, but Iron Man would probably only have the capacity to take advantage of two. With a strong magnetic force, he could disrupt the Scarab site and other functions, disorienting Jaime and the Scarab. The other option is utterly and brutally just try to destroy the armor with the overwhelming power it can generate. Iron Man's best opening, if he could pull it off, is to generate a magnetic force strong enough to block Blue Beetle's Scarab site. Without being able to analyze Iron Man's armor, he can't scan for weaknesses and exploit them, which means both characters can actually rely solely on their heavy hitting weapons. Like we said, it's a short list. Upon entering battle, the Scarab instantly analyzes the enemy before him, and because the tech is simpler to reach standards, a quicker deduction and attack plan would go in the Beetle's favor. Also, since this is a no holds bar fight, Jaime isn't holding the Scarab back from lethal intent. So, the Scarab can fully unleash the superiority of its tech upon Iron Man. But we can agree that Blue Beetle isn't standing up to a Celestial, so this fight still looks pretty good for the God Killer armor's durability. But here's the thing that will put Blue Beetle ahead of Iron Man. When Iron Man went up against the Celestials, he knew what to expect. He knew what to prepare for. But with the Blue Beetle, you can never really tell. No prep time going on here, so the Blue Beetle's infinite adaptive capabilities are something Tony can never really prepare for. 
this fight could get really, really close. But the possibilities of what the Scarab could create is infinite. Blue Beetle's armor was able to make countermeasures against the Anti-Monitor Shadow Demons, which is not a feat to snub off. Tony is great at retaliating after sizing up the competition, and plot armor allows him to escape death, but there aren't going to be any second chances here. Blue Beetle could create a sword as large as his entire Iron Man armor, or modify his pincer blades to cut through the metal of the suit. With its giant size, not much can be done against the speed and agility of the Scarab. Iron Man relies on crafting a suit perfectly made to combat his enemies to win, and that's just not going to work against Blue Beetle either. Let's not forget, if Jaime enters the bleed, by the time Tony can figure out what's going on, his suit will be in shambles. I think the brief explanation we gave earlier on what the ability does kind of explains that statement. As a trump card or from the get-go, once he enters the bleed, Tony or the AI would not comprehend what's happening before Blue Beetle rips the arc reactor out of Tony's chest. Best believe, when the Scarab analyzes Tony and that suit, he would detect the significance of that power source in the chest plate eventually figure out that not only is it his power source, but his life support. Blue Beetle's armor is better, he also has more ways to attack and defend against Tony than Tony has against him. Blue Beetle wins against Iron Man because he's got the far superior tech. Tony can plan, strategize, and design suits all day long, but at the end of the day, when Tony shows up to battle, the parameters of his suit are set. Now, if there was a rematch and he somehow survived Blue Beetle's onslaught, then maybe it would get interesting, because he'd create some sort of Iron Scarab killer armor or something like that. But the Scarab wasn't designed to give second chances.